Here are five stupid things I've noticed about marriage. Having to live with a crazy person. I'm talking about both spouses here, not just one, lest some of you think I'm taking a cheap shot at my lovely and long-suffering wife. Both spouses in a marriage are forced to share their home with another person whom they will spend lots of time regarding as completely insane. That's the beauty of it, I think. The sick, pitiless beauty of it. Having twice as many relatives to avoid. I love my family. I like spending time with my family. But I also like not spending time with my family. And when I got married, I suddenly had twice as many people whose company I enjoy, but whose absence, if I'm being honest, I enjoy just a little bit more. Before I met my wife, I naively assumed that I would be able to blow off the relatives of my then hypothetical future significant other just as easily and guiltlessly as I do my own family. But now I realize that for that to work, I would have had to have married someone who was just as shitty of a child, grandchild, and sibling as I am. And I didn't. So remember, kids, when you get married, try always to marry up in terms of looks and social class. But when it comes to morality and character, always marry at your level or below. It makes life so much easier. Bathroom hypocrisy. Oh, so pissing in the shower is out of the question, but pissing in the toilet, but not flushing it, is totally cool. Trying to remember to pretend to care about things you actually don't give a shit about. It's not the pretending that's a problem so much. I can usually summon a serviceable enough facsimile of giving half a fuck. It's keeping track of all of the times that I have to do that that can be a struggle. There's remembering the names and faces of friends and relatives. There's dates. There's places. There's particular combinations of clothing and jewelry. There is remembering to hide the fact that I find the dancing and the music man to be tedious as fuck. There's remembering not to get up and leave the room when she puts on a meatloaf song. I try, but it's a lot to keep track of, all right? And sometimes I forget, especially with that last one, listening. I think everybody who's been married or been part of a long-term committed relationship of some kind has had the experience of having to sit down and just absorb what the other person has to tell you, even though you would rather be doing anything else. I know that my wife has certainly done that for me, and far more often than I've had to do it for her, I'm fairly certain. She could not possibly care less about the apologetics book I'm critiquing or whatever Batman or Star Trek related horseshit I just can't help but share. But she sits there, she smiles, she maintains eye contact, she nods along, she asks questions and generally just takes it like a fucking champ. Sometimes we just have to do that sort of thing for another person. And when that happens, we call it love. The hardest part is only picking five. Catch you next time.